Hello, if you've watched my other video about uh, the Superhub 3 from Virgin Media, I've just connected it up now. Um, when you've connected it up and activated it over the phone, um, after 3 minutes, uh, so time 3 minutes, do disconnect it by just turning it off. Uh, turn it back on again and leave it for about 15-20 minutes uh, because it does uh, software updates um, when the hub is finally finished you will have a solid white light right at the very bottom under the Virgin logo and the rest of the hub will be completely blank now like I said in my other video um, I'm doing the setup now for the very first time so I'm just going to show you all how as I see it. Uh, the card by the way on the side of the super hub which I showed in my video uh, before uh, that does come completely out. Um, the code on the very bottom of the hub uh, the security code you need that to log into your hub but you can change it at a later date. One other thing to note is the IP address to access the hub is completely new um, and I will also put that in the description of the video. Um, I'm just about to go to it now. Um, it's just slightly different to what it normally is. It's 192 dot one six eight dot zero dot one where before it used to be zero one so there's just like an extra dot in between so when you press enter right this is like the um, the new setup page now as you see it um, and myself so Please bear with me why I do this because it's the very first time. So I'm also showing you all as well so you know what to do when you get a super hub free. Um, right, so English, yeah. Click next. Right, please sign in with your modem settings password. Right, the modem settings password is actually underneath the super hub itself, it's not on the card or on the little sticker what was on the side of the hub okay but you can change this code at a later date anyway right um, now why I do this um, I am going to pause the video just for private information uh, but before I go on to as I go on to the next screen I will resume the video right so I've just entered all my information just to let you know um, when you saw the bit where it said um, password and then email address with the password one um, it's eight characters or more um, and then one you've also got to have one uppercase letter as and then the rest can be lowercase uh, when you click on next after entering that information um, it then asks you to log back in uh, yourself so once you've done all that um, it uh, lets you log in automatically right so this is the main setup um, page as you can see um, it tells you your wireless status uh, mine's currently on uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz with WPS enabled. Uh, the internet is online and the telephone is errors. And the reason for that 
is because the VoIP service which I explained in my last video isn't currently active and as you can see here it says wireless connected devices and LAN connected devices uh, um, at the moment I've got nothing else on except for my PC uh, but if I've got other devices connected uh, and if you have uh, you'll be able to view your connections just on this part here now um, I'm going to run, run through these first and then I'll go through these afterwards the connected devices every time you click on something new you will get this little box um, as you can see here now it, um, I've got all my information for the connected devices and I can refresh it at any time modem mode if you want to use uh, your own router you can do by uh, setting it into modem mode um, but I no longer bother doing that so I leave mine on router mode so it does everything for me with one device if you go into advanced settings you got all your wireless so you can check your wireless signal um, I always do a manual channel and I always choose channel between 4 and 7 I usually go for channel 7 uh, the channel frequency um, you can change that I mean it's currently set to 20 megahertz but if you change it to 20 and 40 it will give you a better signal uh, the wireless frequency 5 gigahertz is currently enabled um, and you can specify on here if you just want to use AC N forward slash AC or A N and AC so I would recommend using that one because some devices are obviously compatible with different things uh, it's going off from there right uh, for the channel auto again um, I always uh, change it sometimes depending on what the options are but for this one I'm going to leave on auto and again for the frequency the channel width um, I'm going to put it on the maximum there which is 20, 40 and 80 just so that it gets the best signal around my house and then click apply settings right there we go so that part is completely done um, for the security here you can actually change your um, wireless network name and the security as well if you just want to use um, WPA2 or if you want to use it as uh, multiple I mean my option personally I always use WPA2 because it's um, it's more secure um, the wireless frequency 5 gigahertz you can change the network name um, but I'm not too sure about these boxes as yet um, I mean they're greyed out at the moment uh, but I'm going to have a go and changing my details later on the wireless Mac filtering um, you can use this to block things or and allow things on your network um, and add a device you can use this section if you're having trouble connecting one of your devices you can use this to um, basically get the device hopefully to work if you know the MAC address of the device the guest network if you have guests coming over to your house and you don't want 
them using your main Wi-Fi details you can basically set up a wireless guest, guest network the WPS that's the button on the front of the uh, super hub and that's used to connect devices quickly um, if um, your device like a sky box has the WPS function the security uh, firewall uh, just leave it all as default that's what's advised by Virgin Mac filtering again um, you can add devices to this if you, if you choose to and it gives you uh, good information at the top now which is a good feature where with the Superhub 2 interface it never used to give you much information on that this one here again for port filtering if you want to block devices and allow port forwarding so again it's just like the same thing I just mentioned you got port triggering and then you got DMZ Then you got your DHCP settings. Your UPnP, I highly recommend keeping this enabled because it helps to work with your like con your consoles and other online other devices which connects to your network. Then you got your tools section. Right, this is your network status. So if you want to check what your status is, make sure it's locked and everything. You come into here. You can check all your downstreams your upstreams your configuration and then your network log to see if you've had any uh, problems with the hub you can check your ping so you can do a ping test to see what you're getting from Virgin the trans route function to help troubleshooting if you've got any um, network issues the MT the MTU size I recommend leaving it alone at the 1500 and then your admin you can go in here to change your login password you can re restore and restart in here so you can back up your settings to a file on your computer which you've made in the hub uh, so that if you have to factory reset or replace the hub at any time you can come in here and restore your settings to save setting them manually um, this one it resets it back to factory defaults uh, so as it came from Virgin and then the last one is to reset the device but uh, to reset your device you can just turn the little switch off on the back of the hub leave it two minutes and then connect it back up remote access so if you're out of your home you can you can set this up and access your hub while you're out then 
the info gives you all your information about the modem and your uh, IP settings here. Okay, um, let me just go. Right, so now if I click on home. Right, we're back to the main screen now. Um, as you can see now, the router has picked up that I've got one device connected. So whenever you've got devices connected, they will show on this page here. If I click on the quick setup guides, here you go, you can actually just, uh, if you don't want to go into the advanced options, you can actually quite easily set up your Wi-Fi here. the network diagnostics tool if I click on that uh, this is uh, you can run this by clicking on there if you've got any problems uh, it will try and auto fix them for you and then the last one on here is modify your guest network if you choose to um, do a guest network Okay, I hope uh, this video has helped you. Um, one last thing I do need to mention is uh, when you do get the Super Hub free, it is now a requirement to send your Super Hub 2, if you've got a Super Hub 2, uh, back to Virgin. Um, it's a free service um, and basically you just take it to your local collect plus point and um, they will receive it back um, other than that it's a £10 activation fee like I said in my last video so I hope this video has helped you all out um, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel for more videos and if you've got any questions please leave a comment below and I will get back to you in due course. Thank you for watching.